everybody. Well, this is my attempt to create uh, the nucleotide bases from formamide again. Uh, in my last video I talked about how uh, I did this experiment and it was a success. I was able to create purines uh, and I tested those using uh, a, a, an ammonia solution with uh, several drops of silver nitrate. So now we're going to film this experiment and I'm going to see if I can create those same purines again. Um, what I have here is a solution of formamide, um, which you can see there, that is 60 milliliters of formamide along with 2.4 grams of sodium pyrophosphate and 2.4 grams of calcium carbonate. Uh, 2.4 grams is actually 4 percent uh, as per the original experiment which they did. And also, in the back there, we have a, a UV light, a UV germicidal light, which produces UVC at a wavelength of 254 nanometers. And of course, I have a metal shield around that uh, because you're not allowed to look at the light directly because it can cause eye damage. So actually, I will be doing this experiment outside, but I just want to give everybody um, a, a quick look at uh, the apparatus that I'm, I'm going to be using. And I've decided that I'm going to heat this uh, experimental mixture uh, to 150 Celsius for 48 hours. And so that's the uh, experiment that I'm going to do. And uh, well, stay tuned. I will move this apparatus outside uh, and then I will start the experiment. So stay tuned. Okay, so, so as you can see, I have moved this experiment outside because not only are formamide vapors toxic, but some of the products produced from this experiment are also toxic. Right now, I only have one UV light shining onto the flask, but I plan to have another one very soon. So the goal is to heat this flask at 150 Celsius for 48 hours and also expose the solution to 72 watts of UVC at 254 nanometers. Incidentally, formamide is one of the substances which was believed to have been present on the primordial earth and some scientists have hypothesized that it may have been the major solvent in the beginning instead of water. Okay everybody, so it's been 24 hours since the beginning of this experiment and um, well the the solution of formamide uh, has uh, the temperature has dropped a little bit. Um, I had it at 150 Celsius. It's now between 140 and 150, but that should be sufficient. Uh, so we'll just uh, keep heating it, and uh, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Oh, and I also wanted to mention that um, I added another UV light to this uh, experiment. So hopefully that will. Uh, help to create greater concentration of nucleotide bases. Okay, so I checked my experiment at the 36 hour mark and um, rather than the colorless solution that I started with, I now have this reddish brown solution. Here, let's see, as you can see there, the solution is now reddish brown. And uh, I have my ideas about why that is. Uh, when you convert uh, formamide into uh, purines, the intermediate step is to produce hydrogen cyanide and some of that hydrogen cyanide can form polymers with it where you have two or more cyanide units linked together and in the pure form these polymers would uh, be a black precipitate uh, however maybe there is a small amount of polymers present uh, with not enough to form a black solution uh, so possibly this this is why the solution is reddish brown but anyway, I'm going to stop this experiment now at the 36 hour mark and uh, I'm going to check, I'm going to test the solution for purines and uh, we'll see if any purines were produced. So stay tuned. So these are representatives of the purine class of compounds. The basic purine is a pyrimidine ring fused with an imidazole ring. As you can see, there are quite a few members of this group, including caffeine, theobromine, as well as the nucleotide bases, adenine and guanine. And so starting with a formamide solution, 
I'm hoping to produce some of these. And really, I hope to produce adenine and guanine from this experiment. But as for now, I can only test my solution to see if any purines are present. Further testing would be involved to try to identify which purines are present. However, it isn't very likely that I will produce caffeine, theobromine, or uric acid from this experiment. Okay, so now uh, we're going to test our solution for the presence of purines. And as you can see here, this is the original solution. And we have our control sample, which I mixed up a solution of formamide, um, calcium carbonate, and sodium pyrophosphate. And there's a little bit of calcium carbonate residue at the bottom because obviously calcium carbonate is not very soluble. And I took the liberty of adding ammonia to this uh, solution because ammonia is one of the reagents that's required for the purine test. And this is our experimental solution, uh, which just contains uh, ammonia right now. Uh, but we're going to add uh, the some of our uh, experimental solution to the ammonia and then we're going to add several drops of silver nitrate and if we have created purines what you would expect to see is a cloudy white precipitate which uh, very quickly turns to a light brown color and it settles out as a light brown precipitate and so now we're going to test these so we're going to take our uh, solution And we're going to add it to our experimental uh, test tube. Just add a small amount to our experimental test tube. Okay. And as you can see, our experimental uh, solution is quite brown already. Uh, so but that's okay. I'm sure that that won't affect the results of the test. And so now we're going to uh, first we're going to add several drops of silver nitrate to our control, and this will serve as the standard uh, by which the uh, we will judge the result of the experiment. Okay, so we're, I think uh, I'm going to add ten drops. Okay, so that is 10 drops of silver nitrate added to our solution. Okay. Oh, and by the way, here's the silver nitrate um, solution. Let's see. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, 0 0.1 molar silver nitrate. Okay, so we're going to mix that up a little bit. And, um, well, as you can see, the solution uh, is basically unchanged. Let me just let you guys see that and it's um, basically unchanged there's really no precipitate uh, except for that um, excess of calcium carbonate at the bottom but again if we had purines uh, we would expect to see a cloudy white solution which would very quickly uh, turn into a brown precipitate and you might be wondering how are we going to see the brown precipitate if um, <laughs> if the experimental solution is already brown, but um, I don't I don't think that should be a problem because I think the brown precipitate is quite pronounced and you'll still be able to see it. So now we're going to add um, ten drops of silver nitrate to our experimental solution. Okay, okay, so we're going to cap that off first. Okay, 
And so now, see if we have a brown precipitate. Hmm. Well, there looks like there's something that's settling out at the bottom there. Um, so we'll um, we'll just let this um, sit a few minutes, and we'll come back and see if we have a brown precipitate. Okay, so it's been about two minutes, um, and uh, well, I put a little bit extra light on the situation here because. Um, it was kind of hard to see. I should have actually done that in the beginning. Um, and actually, you can see that we do, in fact, have a, a, a light brown precipitate, which is settling out. And zoom in there and so you guys can see it. And there it is. Um, the light brown precipitate. So, um, well, this tells me that we've um, created purines from this experiment. We took a solution of formamide and uh, heated it to 150 Celsius for 36 hours and uh, we were able to create purines, uh, which is quite uh, remarkable considering that uh, formamide only has one carbon with an amine group and uh, purines are a big ring structure as you saw in the uh, previous uh, segment of the video. So you can see our nice brown precipitate and um, the control even though it has the same uh, ingredients doesn't have that it just the it just has the uh, calcium carbonate at the bottom which is uh, the excess so again so I'm going to let this uh, sit for a few minutes and I'm hoping that that precipitate will settle out to the bottom so that we can uh, um, es quantitatively estimate how much, how much uh, precipitate we've produced. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes uh, since I, the last segment and so you can see that we have a very, very um, pronounced um, brown precipitate. Um, which hasn't settled out, and I think that that's due to the difference in um, in density of formamide versus water. So, um, but we have a very pronounced brown precipitate, and I want to say one thing about this experiment. This was an experiment to attempt to produce nucleotide bases from formamide, namely adenine and guanine. Uh, however, the chemical test which I just performed only uh, indicates the presence of purines. It's only a test for purines. And so it, it's not going to tell you uh, which individual purines have been produced. Um, so potentially this solution could contain adenine or guanine or both, uh, but it could also contain other purines. And um, to to assess whether or not you've produced adenine or guanine, there's no chemical test for that. Uh, you would have to use um, very uh, sophisticated analytical method like high performance liquid chromatography to, uh, to test whether or not you've created um, the, the nucleotide bases from this experiment. Or you could do a thin layer chromatography. Uh, that's, uh, that's always uh, a possible choice for that. Um, but anyway, we did produce purines. And um, I would be willing to bet, even though I cannot prove it, uh, that some of these purines uh, are indeed uh, the nucleotide bases, adenine and guanine. So uh, this experiment was another success. And um, very happy about this. And uh, well, I've produced purines from my experiment just like uh, the last time when I didn't uh, film the experiment. So again, here's the control. As you can see, just the calcium carbonate precipitate and uh, the experimental solution which we have an abundance of purines it looks like. So that's it. So I want to thank everybody for watching 
and stay tuned for my next video. Hello YouTube. Well, I just wanted to film a quick extra segment. This is what I was looking for in my uh, result before. This is, I, I let this settle out for at least 20 minutes and this is the desired result and you can see it uh, we have a, a light brown precipitate in great quantity now so this is what I was actually expecting to see uh, for the uh, positive test for purines so I just wanted to add that and uh, well that's it so